there's a lot of research on what really makes for happiness in our lives. And turns out that a big core part of that is the relationships that we have. So let's work on just, just trying to, to, to establish and, and, and maintain and develop um, some of those relationships between ourselves. And it makes our lives even better. Um, so I would love to, to, to explore an idea with you. And I haven't done some demos on this in a little while. But the idea of sketching on toned paper. Um, and uh, specifically, I'd like to take a look at drawing raptors. Um, so it's an idea of uh, drawing raptors. And what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be using some gray toned paper. I'm going to be using a, a dark mechanical pencil. This, this mechanical pencil has 2B lead in it. And so that's a rather dark lead. It allows me to sort of push dark areas. The disadvantage of 2B lead is that it tends to smudge more. Um, but it allows you to get nice, rich darks. And the other thing I'm going to be using is a white pencil. And with these three items, it's, there's a, a few kind of nuances in the, the way that you'd kind of sketch and draw with this. Um, you're going to find that this is, this is a great fast system for getting lots of really cool effects. And cool, raptors are neat because there's often really contrasting patterns in them. And so uh, we, will, we will take a look at that. Um, let me bounce over to um, this, this mechanical pencil here. It's got a uh, seven millimeter lead in it and it has, uh, or 0.7 millimeter lead and this white Prismacolor pencil. So a, a mechanical pencil that has 2B lead. You can also just use sort of a regular, you know, dark pencil. Um, but um, this way I don't have to sharpen during my class. So that is going to work for me. Um, let me, uh, I've brought up birdpixel.com, which is one of my favorite resources for, for drawing, um, of, uh, for, for, for getting photographs of birds. And um, what I want to do is I'm just going to uh, scan down, find a couple cool raptors sitting around, and then we'll look at how to draw with this little Swainson's here. It looks, that ah, looks cool. Um, so there is, there's a Swainson's hawk. And what I'm going to do is sketch this using my, this, uh, the toned paper here. I'm going to start with a light kind of ghost drawing. Um, if you are, are, are using, um, uh, I will sometimes do that with a, light blue pencil and um but i find that when i i do that um sometimes it's hard to see on this computer screen um but let me see no we're actually you're able to see these light marks all right so i'm looking at the left hand side of this critter's body where the angle of the head comes down there's a little bit of the chest that comes out and then there's some body that goes down and so that's essentially the shape of the air on this side of the animal's body. So I start just by looking at the negative shape on one side. <laughs> I put in a little spacer ball for the head. And this bird is kind of looking off in this direction, a little bit towards the screen. So I'm gonna draw a line through the middle of its head and a line through its eyes that to sort of helps me kind of get the orientation of this beastie's gaze. And then the air shape on the other side of the head comes down over, and then it drops down really straight. 
So that's the negative shape head spacer, kind of orient my head, and then the negative shape on the other side. That's going to be a formula that I use for kind of initially sketching out a lot of my different birds. Once I've got that framework, I'm then going to start to, actually, let me switch microphones because I'm over at this other desk here. Oh, no worries. We could hear you pretty good when, oh, you, were, you, right. when, when you were over with the with drawing birdie friend. We could hear you. Excellent. So here we are with our birdie friend. Um, <laughs> yeah, like that. Um, so now I'm going to just show you a few other kind of useful lines in, in visualizing and thinking about this, this, this bird here. Um, I'm going to sort of think about sort of it has sort of a mass of its body here. And if I were to draw the center line of that, it comes out over here. That's sort of where the center line of the body is. And that center line of the body, uh, you can also, I want to think of, of, of a, a line wrapping around here, kind of a collar. And as I do that, I'm really visualizing this thing in three dimensions. So if I have, if I have a hot dog shape here with a center line that's facing over this direction, if there's a line that curves across it, um, that is, line is going to come down to this line here, and then it's gonna wrap up around this way. The line coming down here will be at a steeper downward angle than this one will rise. So this one is gonna dr drop down quickly to here, and then wrap up here. And the reason for that, why it's a steeper line here and a more open line over here is that this side here is wrapping around the side of the body. So you're actually seeing some sort of foreshortened sort of part of the body, but turned away from you. That makes this angle in here sort of wrap around more quickly and tightly. So people will tend to draw it this way, where if I have a line coming out here, you're going to sort of kind of have that sort of same, have the same line here as here. But you see how this one actually turns around the corner and this one doesn't. So if I'm doing this, that doesn't feel right in this corner here and here. So wrapping this one around more tightly. Um, let's take a look at sort of more of the anatomy of the bird. I have some undertail coverts in here and there is a tail that hangs down on the end of that. And I'm gonna take a look at the length of my undertail coverts and the length of this tail. That's a pretty long tail. This bird is up on a on, on an obstacle here, on a some sort of a post. And I'm gonna have a foot that comes down to a footy here. I'm gonna have another footy coming down here. Um, I find it's helpful to first draw in the feet and then sort of make sure, you, then I'm gonna sort of make this thing that the bird is standing on come up a little bit higher so that it meets the feet. So I do the same thing if I'm drawing a bird on a branch, say here's my bird and I've got little bird feet coming down here. I'll first draw on my bird feet and then I'll draw on the branch. If you draw in the branch first, you sometimes have to make bird feet that are way too long in order to get to that branch. So feet first, and then, um, then it's going to, then you're going to uh, get to put in your, um, then you put in the branch or whatever the, the bird is, is, is sitting on. I also want to look at general proportions um, in terms of height and width. 
And you notice on this little sketch that I have, this bird is way too skinny. So I want to fluff it out. That's better. All right, that's looking a little bit more broad across there. Um, because if I can catch some proportion um, mistakes at this stage, that's gonna really help me out. I don't want to finish drawing my bird and then say, oh, it's way too skinny. But you see, at this point, when I caught that it was too skinny, that's a really easy change to make. That's an easy modification. Um, so that uh, I wanna be intentional about looking for those, those proportions. Let's see about other proportions. This, so if I can think of the head here as, as this is sort of one zone. Um, if I have one head, two heads, three heads, four. Um, on this birdie over here, I have one head, two heads, three heads, about four heads to get down to there. Okay. Once I generally like my proportions, my head is too narrow this way. That's interesting. For some reason, everything is laterally compressed with me today. So uh, what can I do to thicken that out? I'm going to push it out here a little bit. I'm going to bring it out here a little bit. It's just a little bit too skinny. So that's, that's all proportions. And the best time to catch problems with your proportions is in this sort of preliminary early start of a drawing. If you wait till later on in the drawing, it's not gonna end up well for you because then it's too late to, to change. Here I can easily change my proportions. Um, then I have wing coming in here and dropping down out here and Swainson's hawk wingtip all the way down there by that tail. Swainson's have very long wingtips. Let me actually pull out a Sibley guide here for you just to reinforce that. Because this is sort of an interesting thing on drawing hawks. Um, you want to look at where do the tips of the wings go in relationship to the, the rest of the bird. Um, Look at these Swainsons here with the wingtips here uh, in, in this position down below the tip of the tail. And if I go for a red-tailed hawk, which I think he's got over in this direction, is that right? No? Where's the red-tailed hawk? Red-tailed hawk when you need one. There's one. Um, so red-tailed hawk can be a little bit shorter than the um, than that than that tail, so the the Swainsons has a pretty long pretty long wing tips, so that when you see them flying around, they have this very kind of pointy wing look. So nice long wings. Now let's let's start drawing on top of this framework. Now that it's sort of roughly blocked in. Um, so I'm going to start here with the beak. And the, the trick with drawing the beak is to make the beak, um, don't make the beak too big. It's really easy to draw a beak that is way, way too large. Uh, I'm going to freeze the manual focus. So as I get my hand in there, it'll stay focused on our paper. Um, so my beak is coming from in here. I'm not gonna make it too large. There's a hook down and then back. Um, the bird artist, Keith Hansen, does this really cool thing when he's drawing a bird beak. He'll sometimes, you know, if here's my bird head on the, the hawks, he'll just draw in a little circle 
like that. Really looking at the size of that and then put a little hook on that. I think that's a really cool, cool little system for getting the, the, the beak not to be too big. So the tip of it is black. There's this area called the nares um, around the nostril that is, is colored. And the eye on raptors sits up, um, not here on the mouth line, but above the, sort of the top of the beak. So it's looking down the, 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 the top of the head here. I wanna get the right distance. Actually, before I, I put in the eye, let me show you kind of a, a cool, helpful line. I'm gonna just put a little line up the middle of the forehead here. And that's going to just be a visual placeholder for me to keep track of the center line of my bird's head. So I'm gonna put in a hint of some feathers in here. I'm gonna put in a hint of some feathers back here. And let's get that eye. For a raptor eye, ra on raptor skulls, let me show you kind of an interesting thing about raptor skulls. Oh. On a raptor skull, there is a bony ridge above where the eye sits. So the eye is gonna be a big thing down here. But the, the part that the, the round part that you see on the outside is going to be right in here. But then you've got this bony ridge above the eye. So again, your eye goes down in here. And that provides a little bit of shade down over the eye or perhaps protects it. So I am. And that also kind of makes the raptor look a little bit more serious. So on this raptor eye, I want to get my eye the right distance back here. So I'm looking at the distance between the edge of the beak and I'm gonna put my eye just about in here. And pop that in. And I'm going to give it just a little bit of this shadow zone over the eye. And that's gonna make it look kind of angry hawk. If I am just doing that you know, quickly on this little doodle here, there it is, it makes it, if there's just a circle in the middle of the head, it looks a little bit more naive and not as birds of prey know they're cool-ish. I have cheek feathers that fluff in here, throat that comes down. I'm gonna to suggest to the person who's looking at it that there is an area of, of feathers right over its ear patch here. And then I'm going to just use sets of some parallel hatching lines to fill in the rest of the head. But I'm gonna do that in little zones. So I'm gonna imagine a little zone here over the eye and do that together. Then I'm going to do one kind of coming out this way, roughly sort of following the direction of the feathers. And that kind of carves the bird's head into planes because you see this change in the angle of these strokes here 
from here to here. And then it makes you think that you're going up on a forehead here and in here you're changing direction and going in, in a different direction. So this makes you sort of feel that you've got this zone here and then there's stuff wrapping around the back of the head here. So by having those pencil strokes go in different directions, let's kind of do that just sort of a little bit more diagrammatically. So if this was the, the head here. And it had that eye. Okay, and what I'm doing is I'm thinking of this in different zones. So I'm gonna have a zone here, I'm gonna have a zone here. I'm gonna have a zone going out over its ear patch. I'm going to have a zone coming down here on the side of the head and then one more back there. So I've broken this down into these little zones. And as I am, I could just get in here and go, it's all the same color. But notice if I kind of follow these planes in here, now I'm gonna go down a little bit at a steeper angle in here. And here I'm coming up, kind of fanning around. And here I'm going back. That visually, you still kind of get that this is an area of old dark, but you've got a little bit of sense of contours going across the head of that bird. Here is a sort of lovely little, this little chest patch out here. I want this to feel like it's rough feathers and I'm gonna have a steeper angle coming down here and I'm gonna have a wider angle coming out on this side for this reason. I'm gonna start just by putting in a few of the shadows between some of these clumps of feathers. That's gonna make it feel a little bit fluffy. Over here on the side, there is this nice little kind of rim of, you can sort of see, a few of the wing feathers on the other side. And that is gonna give you just a little bit of a dark frame going around the, the edge of this bird. I really, uh, visually, I like that, that I don't have to sort of draw in this, this whole kind of side of the bird, but if I have just something like this, it suggests that just that is gonna kind of get people's eyes sort of sent down this way. On the other side, I have an area on the top where I've got a little bit of scapular feathers coming in, in here. I have some uh, secondary covert feathers on the top down to about, yeah, going pretty far down. There are secondary feathers coming to about here and then primary feathers shoot down. So in this, I'm going to try to get, don't want to draw in feather, 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 but I want to suggest, I want to suggest that there are, are, you know, there's, let's say there's a bunch of feathers and they overlap like this. If I draw this across the bird, it will end up kind of looking like it's a fish or a pine cone. And um, so instead, Instead, what I'm going to do is I'm going to suggest that by thinking like in this sort of a structure, there'll be some places where the feathers are closer together. There are going to be some places where the feathers are a little bit further apart. And those further apart places, you'll get shadows. So I'm going to put a little bit of a shadow in here. 
I'm gonna put a little bit of a shadow in here, right? I am gonna sort of suggest that there's a shadow coming along the edge of this one and a little bit down in here. So um, again, I'm not putting a shadow in on, on, on everyone, but I am, I'm gonna suggest or, or in some places there might be kind of a line of shadows where a whole kind of clump of these might kind of pop up. All right, so here's sort of a line, sort of a diagonal line of shadows. I'm gonna think of what are, I don't want to draw in every edge, but I wanna get a few of these kind of clumps of shadows. So I'm gonna draw in a little kind of shadow clump right in there. And I'm going to get another little shadow clump there. Now I can get a just a hint in here that this is 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 is, is feathers in here with with shadows on their edges. But I don't want to get in there and draw every one. Or again, it starts to look really scaly. Towards the back here, I've got more kind of sort of hints of uh, hints of uh, more of the sort of the, the larger, more fluffy covert feathers. Going to get a hint of some feathers coming down in here, but I don't want to have to get in there and draw in every feather edge. Just a little bit goes a really long way. On this edge here of this, there are breast feathers up here that are kind of sticking out over the top of this. So I'm going to emphasize those and then this little straight edge. It's really dark underneath that. Notice how with this to be lead, I can really punch in a nice dark, easy shadow. What about this whole belly business going on out here? Well, there's some nice kind of fluffy edges here. I, I'm intentionally not putting in all those spots on the chest. Those will come a little bit later. Um, I have one leg coming in here. And I want to just su suggest these feet without getting totally lost in all the detail on them. So put in a little emphasis mark where you see that uh, claw. There are some really nice long undertail coverts here. And then I'm seeing the underside of the tail down in here. The center line of this bird comes right in here. You notice there's a little bit of an up in here. I'm going to suggest this sort of overhanging uh, belly feathers here with a shadow. Now, let's think about my values in this picture. Here are my values. I'm going to have darks. And those are for me mostly accents. 
I'm going to have some places where there is a middle value gray. And I'm gonna have some places where there is a light value gray. So light value gray in here, middle value gray in here. I'm going to have some places where it's the color of the paper. And I'm gonna have some places where I'm gonna use a white pencil. So squint at this bird and look at where you see the lightest lights on the photograph. Where do you see the lightest lights? Here's what I'm seeing. Um, as I squint at it, I'm seeing kind of a V across here where it's kind of catching the light the most. And um, up in the forehead here and um, part of the throat in here. Uh, these areas down in here, um, I'm gonna let that be the color of the sort of the, sh the, the color of the white that's in shadow. I'm gonna let that be the color of the paper. So what I have to do is I have to assign different regions to these different value states. So the white in the light is going to be my white colored pencil. The white in the shade is gonna be the color of the paper. And, um, and then the deeper shadows are going to be this. The pigmented areas are gonna be that, and then some accents are gonna be that. All right, so now I'm going to put this in and I'm going to have that be an area in here and I'm going to have it be an area in here. So I'm first just deciding where that goes. In this light area, I'm gonna get rid of some of my blue pencil marks. And I'm gonna do the same thing of sort of showing contours with the directions of these white pencil marks. So over here in this area, oh, actually I can get rid of these. Over here in this area, I'm going to have, it's coming down like that. I'm gonna try not to get the pencil, the white pencil into the graphite, because if I do, it will just smear and smudge it. And it makes the graphite really kind of eh. So I'm gonna to try to avoid that. Over here, I'm gonna have my pencil strokes going in this direction. hint of white in here, a hint of white in here, a clear spot of white up in here. On the forehead, I'm gonna put some white. And I'll put some also over here. Leave a little bit of dark uh, in there underneath that beak to be sort of the, the shadow under that throat as it turns in. I'm gonna reinforce the strength of the white right here in the middle. Now,
Hmm. This contrast, this jump here feels a little bit too severe for me. So I think I'm gonna put a little bit of, do you see these, these, these feathers that are kind of down in here? I'm gonna make those a light white. And then the last thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to put in those little dots on the chest. And they do a really good job of showing the contour. So I want to pay a lot of attention to which direction they go. Which direction do they go? Actually, I actually want to first make this a little bit of a lighter, darker value here. on the wing and also here on the head so that it contrasts with that chest. That's better. Now, I have dots that are coming down this direction. Um, I have dots over here that are coming in this direction, then this direction, and then over here, they're going out this way. So paying attention to those is gonna really help carve this bird. And as I put these in, I'm going to avoid a string of pearls effect that will just look too mechanical. Um, I want these to feel consistently inconsistent. I also want to be aware that very often what's going on in here is that there's a central shaft of this feather and there's a series of little marks that kind of go across it like that. And so, um, and then sometimes at the tip that will kind of come down into a point. So knowing that that is a pattern that you're often seeing in these chest feathers, I'm not just going to be putting in sort of random dots. Um, all right. So little curvy ones. You don't have to match it spot by spot, but you want to get the general feeling of what's going on there. And then on that far side and really kind of going out at uh, an angle here. I know I'm going to overdo it <laughs> if I go any further. Um, so I'm just going to stop. Now, a few places I'm going to come in here and do uh, what's called just kind of crisping up the edges. 
where I'm going to just make a few of the little lines around the edges of this just a little bit more kind of crisp and bold to show the form. I'm not going to be putting a hard line all the way around the entire drawing. I want to make sure my line is variable. I'm going to back up from that. And you know this this picture was done with a very cooperative bird, right? We've got a photograph. It wasn't moving. Um, but what would this look like in field sketching? So what I'm going to do now is just uh, Let's do a, there we are. Uh, what I'm going to do now is um, we're going to get a, um, a, a photograph and we've got seven minutes left in the class. And in that seven minutes, I'm going to do an entire drawing uh, in those seven minutes. Um, so I am, Going to go back to let's do a search for hawk. Hey, how did how did you get in there? Um, It's like cuckoo. And I have to pick, oh, wow. Crested hawk eagle. Oh, you're cool. Um, Tiny hawk. <laughs> oh, you're adorable. You're just adorable. <laughs> Let's do the tiny hawk. I didn't even know there's a hawk called the tiny hawk. Where are you from? Where are you from, little tiny hawk? You're me. All right. So there's our tiny hawk. Um, so let's do. Let's just do a. Um, a, 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 a speed drawing of a tiny hawk on, um, on, our, on our paper here. And so you're gonna see that this is, this is gonna go faster, but I'm gonna use the same sort of general, general approach here. Um, then maybe we'll end with a fast bald eagle, um, an even faster one. All right, so here's my little tiny hawk thought. I am going to start with just sort of the, the shape of the negative space behind your head, right? I'm a one trick pony. I do the same thing each time I'm making a sketch of a bird. And the reason that I do that is that then when a bird pops up in front of me, I'm not sitting there thinking like, oh my gosh, how do I even start with you? I've got, I've got a plan. I kind of can, I, I know generally what I'm going to be doing. And, um, you know, it's not the only way of drawing a bird, but if I'm consistent, then uh, that is going to, 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 to help me be able just to start, just to, 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 to go. Right. So I've got a nice little starter thing. I'm gonna give my bird a zipper. And it often helps to sort of just put in some of these little kind of wrap around cross contour lines 
just to help you kind of remember that you're drawing a rounded form. Um, so this little one gets a little beak. We're going to have a proportionately big eye. And one of the things that's going to make it look like a little hawk is that, that big eye. So you've got a wing that's wrapping around over here. What detail am I seeing in the wing? Not much. So I don't have to draw it. That's great. Notice how kind of simply that foot kind of gets treated. There's, there's, I'm not getting wrapped around the axle, but oh no, now it's a bird foot. Now I got to do something um, perfect here. Um, I, I just am, I'm making a, a light loose placeholder for that. Now, number of bands on the underside of the tail are going to be important for me. Um, so there's gonna be a space, there's gonna be one band, there's going to be a bigger space, and there's going to be a second band, and then there's the base of the tail. Okay. Um, so in terms of value range, I'm going to have my darkest darks. I'm going to have a mid value with my pencil. I'm going to have the gray of my paper, and then I'm going to have my my white. So let, where do I put my darkest darks? I put my darkest dark right in here. Where I'm gonna put a darkest dark? I'm gonna put it wrapping around the side of the body down here under that wing. I'm going to get a Pretty good dark on that band going across the tail. And the band going across the tail. And now, so that is that one. Let's get this next one in. Um, so I'm going to do uh the side of the head here notice how i'm again changing the directions of my pencil strokes so here this upper part of the chest is all And because I have those nice contour lines, it helps me be able to put in these little strokes going around here. <clears throat> I'm gonna put in some light in here. I'm gonna put some light in here and some light. See how that, that kind of got smudgy in there? That's because I'm putting pencil over graphite. Yeah, sad, sad, too bad. And I'm going to get a little bit more of my middle value 
between some of these white lines. And the final thing that I'm going to do is actually let's just do a search for bald eagle. Whack. There it is. Let's get our majestic on. All right, so you're out there, you see yourself a little bald eagle. And here is the, you know, one or two minute pencil sketch of this, this bald eagle, All right? Uh, here is, we've got a body and, and it comes down and then there's a little head that sticks up. And then there's a body that comes in and goes down. And then there's some white undertail covert craziness happening in there. And there's a branch that comes up across that whole business. Okay. Um, so flat side of my head and rounded top and then a broader side out there. There is a big old opening mouth. And that connects to an angry bird's eye. And what about my body? We're going to come over and down. And there is going to be a big breast area in here. And it is going to be shaggy towards the bottom. Little hint of some bird feet in there. There's a zone in here that is all in really dark shadow. And why don't I put in this branch that's coming in here. So in the dark area, I'm just gonna make that very dark, dark. Um, oops, I lost some of my undertail coverts. Too bad. Um, this is intentionally shaggy in here, flat shag in here. And that is going to go to a medium value, chesty area, down to one down here. And then I am going to get my white and I'm gonna put that on the side of the head that is facing the sun. And stop. That was a bunch of raptors with um, a bunch of, of, of raptors with toned pencil, uh, toned paper graphite pencil and also that uh that white key things when you're doing this approach leave some areas gray paper 
So on my bald eagle, my gray paper was the bald eagle shadow side of the head and the shadow in those undertail coverts in there. If it's old graphite or old white pencil, and then you're not using that tone of the, the paper as one of your values, you might as well not be using toned paper. So really intentionally get that to be one of the values in the picture. So number two, remember that your pencil will smudge if uh, you put the white pencil on top of it. So in areas where you are uh, going to be putting in detail, get your whites in, then drop those um, light value things on, uh, sorry, then, then drop the, the uh, so get your white in, then drop those details in. Because if you're doing the other order, the pencil will smudge the bejeebers out of those. So that's why on this bird here, on these lower sections here, I was starting to kind of come down with some of these, these, these bars, but I didn't continue them all the way across the belly here. I first put in the whites and then came in and put some of these darks in, in between them. This beak and this eye got Just pretty can't. smudged, didn't they? Oops. We, uh, we can't this see. beak and this eye got pretty smudged. Um, if I had um, instead... Um, oh, Jack, we still cannot see the... Oh. Uh, sorry. Oh, <laughs> that's right. Oh, yeah, that. Um, so this beak and this eye, they got pretty smudged. Um, uh, uh, and here's uh, what I was talking about. As I was doing these sort of stripes on the side here, I was drawing those pencil stripes in, and then I stopped and I put in the white ones, and then I came back in and I filled those dark ones in around them. If I had done all the pencil first, then the white pencil might have smudged some of those. So just sort of be aware of um, how your white pencil wants to wants to to, to smudge you. Um, leave some grays, and tone paper will be your friend. Um, it's it's a lot of fun to do. You can get you can get cool effects. You know, just you find. Oh, also one other thing: when you start putting in your white pencil. It's gonna be a lot of fun. So you're not gonna wanna stop. And soon you're gonna find that all the gray paper gets filled with that white pencil. Yeah, I should have left a little bit of that gray on there. So um, just remember, white pencil is fun. Which is one reason why you can also just do some studies. Just like, I'm going to play with my white pencil just to get that out of my system. Like, oh, this is great. I love using it. I'm now doing like way too much, but I'm okay with that because this is just a study. But okay, ah, I feel better now. I got that out of my system. And then you can kind of, when you're doing your sketch, you'll be like, oh, and I think I will stop. All right? And I hope that uh, that is useful. Um, the... Uh, Um, I like uh, Susan's um, idea here. Susan's putting an idea of, of, a, of a, a bird speed run. Um, where we've, uh, we actually do that on another class. Let's, uh, Susan, remind me to do that. Let's let's do that together. Where we'll you know draw we'll draw a bird of five minutes. Um, uh, you know, then then start kind of cutting that amount down until we can go, ah, that's my boom, ah, right. Um, let's see if we can get some speed some speed raptors or other birdies under our belts. That's a great idea. Um, so did anybody have, um, uh, uh, does, does, does anybody have any thoughts, comments, or suggestions about this approach with toned paper um, or things you wanted to share related to that? Then we'll go to sort of an open discussion of things. So if there's something that you would like to share, all you have to do is you can physically raise your hand um, and, I, and I'll see you kind of moving on your screen. And, um, or you can use the raise hand function. Um, I'm going to start with Sandra. Um, so Sandra, I'm going to, uh, you can now unmute and I'll have you join me here. Sandra. <clears throat> I just wanted to know what type of hawk the second one is that we did. Oh, that, that was a tiny hawk. Really? really? 
Uh, really? Oh. Really? That's the tiny hawk. I didn't know there's a hawk called the tiny hawk, um, but that's a hawk called the tiny hawk. And how uh, big, really? Yeah, no, yeah. So, so the that that's, or I, I should say that is um, Vivek Ken, uh, Kensodi um, put that into the slot where he usually writes the names, and and he doesn't, um, and he's really really uh, very good with bird identification. Um, so I'll bet um, we can do somebody out there uh, in in the group just do a quick search, make sure there's a, a, a just do a search for a tiny hawk, and see if uh, a little exhibitor um, pops up. I think that one is called the Tiny Hawk. The other was the Swainsons, and then we ended with a bald eagle. Got it. Thank you. <laughs> you bet. <laughs> yeah, that's that's surprising. Um, uh, a surprising name for for that critter, and adorable. Um, Mary, um, I'm going to uh, allow you to unmute yourself. I'll have you join me uh, here on the discussion. Hi there. Good to see you. Hi. Hi, good to see you. Um, there we go. Um, okay, let's see if we can. Whoop. Um, I'm trying to. Uh, oh, I like what I'm seeing here. Um, yeah, I. <laughs> I don't know. Here we go. I have trouble with uh, Zoom. Um, it's always going backwards. Um, I I love doing this. It's so fun. Um, I found that I would I just use colored pencil from the get go, and that doesn't want to smudge as much as graphite. I started with ah, a little that's that's useful. Yeah, the colored pencil it doesn't erase very well on the, mm -hmm, on the mm -hmm. paper, but um, if you start out really light, you, I suppose you could. But um, it doesn't it doesn't erase. I mean, it doesn't smudge and. There's even a place where I put some white over the um, the brown. Oh, that's nice. Yeah. I kind of like it on the effect. I do um, too. And anyway. I really like the way, uh, I really like the gradations of value that you got with putting the, really using the color of the paper there. To make the shadows for the white. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, that really. That. That worked out. I I was happy with that. Yes, yeah. that 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 really looks like um, shadows in that. Uh, in the, in yeah, those and I you know it. that's kind of I, that's something that's challenging to paint white feathers, you know, with watercolor or something. It's very challenging. Um, yeah, but we, we should probably do uh, do a little workshop just on drawing some white birds. Yes, black birds and white birds and. <laughs> Yeah, all those things, they're all hard. They're all a challenge. Yeah. Uh, but yeah. Uh, Mary, I really like the way that this, uh, that the, the, the light values on this uh, came out. Yeah. Yeah. They pop, which is the fun part. Yeah. No, 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 but, but, but you also, you managed to retain, you retain your grades. You you, yeah. you you got the gray yeah. of the paper in there really I usually, effectively. Yeah, there's some there. I usually lose, kind of lose them. It's easy to do. And then I <laughs> and then I say, oh, I meant to do that. Yes. <laughs> I, meant, <laughs> I meant it that way. But yeah, it's it's hard to it's 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 so nice yeah. when you can keep them and it's really easy to lose. Them. Yeah. <laughs> That's great. Anyway, no, thank you for the session. It was really fun. Well, uh, Mary, thank, I'm glad you enjoyed it. And um, thank you yeah. for sharing that. Okay. Okay. Um, and here we go. All right. Um, let me take a look in the gallery. Um, uh, Jan has got a one to share. I'm going to bring Jan in. And hold on a second, I'll allow you to unmute in. Now you can unmute. Okay, hi. This was very fun. I, I like trying to uh, work fast. Um, so what my comment is, is about my polychromos Faber-Castell pencil, which on this Strathmore um, paper was just really hard to get enough white. I was mm -hmm. just, I was yeah. digging it. But so I didn't choose the right pencil. 
You know, it, it's it's interesting. Generally speaking, oh, actually, let, let's hold hold those up for just one moment. Oh, there. Let's see where they are. I've got a lot of. Just a second. I've got a lot of dark and light, but um, it you know it looks like there's more contrast here than it looks to me. But I was hurting my hand trying to yeah. dig in too much, so. I think you know your prisma color probably isn't as waxy and probably transfers better onto this paper. No, the the prisma color is super waxy. Um, for most colors, for most of uh, for most of the colored pencil drawings that I do, I prefer using the polychromos. Hmm. The exception is when I want to get bright white on my paper. The Prismacolor pencil pops a, a, a brighter white. It will be much more waxy. Um, and so generally, and, and, and the Prismacolor pencil tends to, to, the tip tends to break more and snap more. Um, and that's, that's frustrating. Um, well, it was just, it was just interesting. I, you, it just really looked like your white was going down a lot better. Yeah, than no, no, you're, you're absolutely right. So generally speaking, I prefer using the polychromos pencils. However, for, to get your whites white, <laughs> um, try laundering with Prismacolor. Yeah. Um, let, actually, I, let me just do a quick demo for you of that, um, where, where you, you side by side Prismacolor and polychromos. Uh, here it is. So here's here's prisma color. Here's polychromos. And this is I'm going to use the same pressure. That's my polychromos. Same pressure. That's my prisma color. A little bit brighter on that. That prisma color, but the, the the prisma color is much more much more waxy. Okay, here's here's good. polychromos again. So let me just draw some lines. That's prism. That's polychromos. That one here. So this is this one here is. Polychromos, these ones here are Prisma. And someone just commented in the chat that perhaps my paper is um, compounding the problem, you know. Yeah, smoother paper, uh, paper without quite as much tooth will tend not to, um, to, 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 to grab as much of the of, of the color. Yeah. Well, it was fun. <laughs> that was fun. Thank you so much for, for, for sharing that observation. Um, let me see here. Um, let's join Ray Bonto. Ray Bonto, um, hold on a second. I will allow you to unmute in just a second and you can unmute now. Yeah. Um, oh, let, let um, me uh, minimize my screen here, remove spotlight. There we go. Oh, were you so, using a water soluble pencil for part of that? No. Uh, I was using ballpoint pen for these oh. dots, and that's a non-smudge tip. Oh, that's good. That's nice. So these, are, these, are, these are a ballpoint pen underdrawing, then with the pencil on top. Yes. Wow. You and um for. The, and you're, you're, so all those dark values are with your ballpoint. Yes. 
impressive work. You are you are becoming a a ballpoint ninja. That is cool. That is really nice, nice, nicely done. Um, I on on that tiny hawk. I really like the values on that one. Uh, let's see, we're not quite, the tiny hawk's gone off the screen. There's our little tiny hawk. Yeah, it really feels like the, um, yeah, the, the, the grays are shading into the lights and the way you're kind of playing around with those together, really subtle, um, really subtle work. I like that a lot. Yeah, well, when I heard you were doing tone paper, um, well, I heard wrong. I thought it was on Thursday, so I thought, I well, I need to go and get some. Um, but I did, after thinking of it, I found I had some. Mm. Excellent. And, um, uh, then I was worried that you would do gouache because I thought I didn't have any, but that is, I don't have any watercolors. I had my gouache and it was right at hand. Oh, that's but, excellent. And I also had my prisma colors. You're ready to roll. <laughs> so everything worked out in the end. But yeah, so yeah, we will be doing um, gouache on Thursday. We'll be doing um, mini landscapes with gouache on tone paper. Mm, okay. Yeah. So uh, there, there will be. We're going. We're going to going for a a, a toned paper party here, um, with with uh, these these raptors. And then uh, we'll have more of that on on Thursday. Okay, great. So now about the pigeons. Ah, tell us about the pigeons. Now, because now that you've mentioned it about time and stuff, I always take my watch. Um, oh. But. Um, And after you gave me the idea of estimating the total pigeons and then counting the mating ones, mm -hmm. I decided I took it a uh, took that a little too seriously. Oh, I, I don't know if you can take that too seriously. When when we do this kind of deep geeking out, the world opens up for us. So yeah, let's see what we're up to here. Well, this was just yeah. I found that wren after nearly six months. <laughs> oh, that's fine. Yeah. I was just looking around and then I found this tiny thing hopping about. Um, but yeah, this is just some stuff. Ooh, now this good. comes to count. Here comes the counting. Um, okay, here we go. Random timing, just at one time, I I made a fraction. So six out of 24 were doing breeding displays. Yes. Yeah. Uh, counting, sometimes it might be a little. Oh, this is brilliant. This is brilliant. I see what's going on here. So you're um, at these different time intervals you are recording out of how many birds are present, how many are involved in some form of courtship display. Yes. Um, That's cool. That's cool. So I first started counting pairs, but that doesn't really, you have to count the number of males who are trying to mate because right. there might be two chasing one. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Now, For the first time, I saw a female uh, fall in love um, instead of walking away. Uh, and they did the, I, the going down and up the male. That's the mm -hmm. display dance. And now I found, saw the mating dance. Oh, that's really cool. Did, yeah. did the female have a kind of a, a, a part of the courtship dance that she did? Yeah. 
Oh, yeah. tell us about it. So, um, the male takes the neck and goes from underneath, and the female goes from the top, and they bite each other's beaks, and then wow. they do that with their necks. Oh, I've never seen that behavior. That's so cool. That's really, really, really fun. And after that was done, the male had just jumped on her back when another pigeon came and said, I deserve her. And chase, oh. <laughs> but they were engaged, so they flew away. <laughs> oh, so the, those two flew off together? Yes. She was like, uh 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 uh. That's really cool. That's fascinating. Yeah. So I decided to do this whole page on mating. Oh, oh, here's like, so you made a flow chart. Yes. Of the different courtship behaviors. Yep. Oh, look at this. So look, everybody, look at this. So look at this in terms of visual thinking. This is brilliant. Um, so we've got um, sort of, you've got sort of starting with this courtship behavior and then two different paths, depending on whether the female is receptive or not. And look at the, also how there's, you know, the one pigeon is drawing is used to, with kind of multiple sort of head positions. Um, uh, yeah, as Jan is also pointing out, that is, that's really, that's really cool. Yeah. Um, that, that in terms of visual display of behavioral information is one of the, the best um, sort of diagrams that I have seen somebody do in a nature journal. I really am impressed at your way of visualizing and recording those different behaviors. Now, I the next day I heard some singing. Um, and I was looking, I knew the chance was very low that I would see whoever was thinking, but I did. Um, and I don't know, uh, I never, I, I've never seen this bird before. It wasn't a wren because it didn't have a dark cap. And it wasn't and, a sparrow because its wing wasn't patterned and stuff. And it's, um, so, but it was all kind of, uh, was it all sort of slaty one color or? A little darker down here and a little, a little brownish and a little gray here. And was it actively singing? Yes. And very musical song. Can you, might, might you be able to describe the song for us? Mm. <laughs> well, not really. No. Okay. Like, um, like yeah, it, 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 it's, it, it's hard to kind of, do you remember the color of the beak? Black. Oh, it was okay. black. Because I was thinking, the one of the first things I was thinking is maybe a Eurasian blackbird because yep. they have such, they have such beautiful, beautiful songs. Um, <clears throat> here in the United States, our blackbirds are icterids. They don't really have super musical songs. But your blackbird is is a uh, I think it's a, a kind of a thrush that is has a really amazing song. But they've got yellow beaks. Um, the uh, so that would be a, a good thing to 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 look for. Um, Yeah. Um, now I couldn't do much pigeon drawings because I was too busy counting them and coming up with the one tenth. <laughs> coming up with the one tenth conclusion of mating males. Now, won't it be interesting to see at a different time of year how those proportions change? Yeah, that, that would be now. A few pigeons. Now it, uh, the pigeons then flew away. So I decided to, um, and there were some very bright flowers. So, 
Oh, this is cool. I really, I mean, on, on that, uh, that lower one there, folks, notice how you can just sort of get a sense of it rotating in space. Think of that as three-dimensional uh, thing. So in order to get that effect, you need to pay attention to, just like there were different angles of the, on the chest of the bird that was at a three quarter view angle on the side that was far away from you with the side that was close to you. So what Ray Bonto has to do is pay tons of attention to the angle of the far side of the pedal versus the near side of the pedal. And because Ray Bonto did, you get that real sense of that rotating flower. Um, what, what, uh, let me just do a quick demo uh, of Ray Bonto to sort of show people what most folks do when they're doing this. You solved that problem very, very well. Your, your flower feels like it has, is, is kind of going back on three dimensions. And I just wanted to point out to people, there's a really subtle, interesting thing that is a, a, a very high level skill that Ray Bonto is uh, uh, demonstrating here. I just wanted to, to share with people um, uh, what that is. And then we'll go back to um, any other journal pages that you have to, to, to share there. Um, but to check this out, um, it just, it's so, it's really exciting for me to see that in your drawing. Here's what most people will tend to do. They will say, all right, I'm drawing a cone-shaped flower, or not a, a, a sort of this, this flower that's kind of coming down, the petals are wrapping around. There's a petal that is wrap, that is towards me over here. There's a petal over here. There's a petal over here that are wrapping around. And um, so what they'll then do is they'll draw this one here symmetrically because it, it is roughly symmetrical. Then there's this other symmetrical flower over here. Their brain knows that, let's just sort of think of this as a triangle here. Their brain knows that this side is the same as this side. So what they do is they draw it over here with this side the same as that side. And then you draw the same thing over here. And sometimes they will, they'll go like, oh, it's foreshortened. So I should make these a little bit skinnier out on the side. But basically what, we're, what you're doing is you're getting those, the, the two sides of that are symmetrical. And you look at that and it doesn't look like it's wrapping around in space. So what was it? that Ray Bonto was doing on that sketch. Well, I'm glad you asked. What it was, so if I have a, one pedal in here, there's gonna be a foreshortened one in here, and there's gonna be a foreshortened one in here. This one in the middle, is coming down. Now, um, the one, the plant that Ray Bonto was drawing, the, the petals themselves were kind of a little bit more twisted and curled. So there's some other nuances in it. Um, but um, what's gonna happen is that this side is going to have a different angle than this side. So if this is same, same, that side is small, big. And let's look at the one that's gonna come over here on this side. And the reason that it is small, big, is because this side is uh, this side here is pointing more towards you. And so you're seeing more of that face. This side is curling around away from you. So a lot of this surface here is foreshortened. So let's, knowing that, knowing that, 
let's, so that's a little bit of a counterintuitive thing because your brain wants to keep everything symmetrical. So you'll, you'll see people like, let's say, when, let's, let's turn this, this flower upside down. Let's, let's draw, let's gonna draw one more flower right here. And I'm gonna have a petal sticking out here, petal sticking out here, petal sticking out here. Symmetrical, big side, flatter side, curvy side, less curvy side. And then on the sides, you just have these, these ones where you're kind of looking at them sort of edge on. And then this one back here, this side is going to be straighter and this far side is gonna be more rounded. And on this one coming in here, this side of the flower is going to be straighter and this side here is going to be more rounded. And that is a subtlety of flower petal shape that most people never notice. But <clears throat> Ray Bonto did. Um, so I'm going to remove my spotlight. Can, Ray Bonto, can we bring your drawing back on here? And I'm going to spotlight it. Um, let's see that lower one, if we could. Yeah. Yeah, look, look at that one. Take a look on the right. See the big curve on the side that's close to you, and the far side is just is, is trimmed out. That makes that one wrap around in space. Cut, yeah. boom. And then, and then I decided to turn it around so that I could look at it straight. That's up. smart, that's really smart because you know, you, you're able to show so much more of the structure from different positions and angles. And I found that the, the daffodils have started blooming. Oh, that's really fun. And it was around the same time that I saw them blooming last year. Oh, interesting. So you're looking at, by comparing the time that you, um, uh, the, the, the time from this year and last year, you're looking at phen uh, phenology. Sort of when do, what is the timing change? in when different sorts of things bloom. That's really cool. So I would also do a show and tell with that where you show it in your journal, but also add a little note on the side saying, ah, these seem to be blooming at the same time that I saw them blooming last year, right? That's really cool. Oh, yeah. hey, um, so mad points uh, today for those, um, uh, uh, ethology uh, behavior ob observations that was uh, really really cool to see. Thank you. Thank you. That's that's really fun. Um, let me see here. Um, my gallery view. Um, does anybody else have a journal page? I see um, uh, Holly, Ivea, and Susan. Uh, to. Uh, let's start with Holly. I will allow you to unmute yourself and I will bring you up and add you into the spotlight. Hi there. Let's see. Can you hear me? Loud and clear. Okay. Um, I'm brand new and I'm so excited to be here. And I just wanted to share, um, like, um, it was interesting that, that, that hawks or raptors was, was the subject because uh, yesterday we were at the lake and we saw fairly close uh, directly above us two large cooper hawks oh. and one and we got one of them we flew flew we got to see the whole thing from beneath it was lovely yeah so so that was really cool and this is so this is the first time i've ever i um i've never i yeah i've never been uh taken a bird course but i i've, draw, I've drawn some birds before but this is really interesting wonderful so this is my first um that's my that's my that's my bird my hawk. But oh. I, my my prismacolor broke, and I couldn't use it. 
So I'm, oh, grabbing, no. any, I'm grabbing anything I could because I know <laughs> the principal color is the only thing that's going to work, right? So, <laughs> yeah. so anyway, so that was one, it was wonderful to know about uh, the way the way to use the strokes. Yeah. Yes, you really color. carved that form. Isn't that neat to see how it just becomes like a sculpture? Yeah, it's really, really cool. I, I just didn't know that at all. So I'm really happy about learning that. And then um, I just wanted to show quickly that I, um, so be, before I got on, I, I, I watched a few of your blogs and I was so impressed with everybody, like the sharing and um, the kindness. I just was very attracted to the community. So uh, so I, I sat down I, on Saturday. I just, I just, um, I tried to sketch some birds from, from, uh, from photos that I took because they're not very fast because I love the way the nut hatch hangs oh, yes. upside down. It just cracks <laughs> me up every time. And, and, and the chickadee is just so awfully and funny, you know, and then there was a one that I watched. It was about, about the, um, the tree and, and drawing the canopy first. That was absolutely wonderful. Like, that, that, that really nice. worked for you. Yeah. Yeah. Really cool. And then I did this from a picture uh, it, laboriously. <laughs> <laughs> so, no, no, but it really has it. It, it really feels titmousey to me. Yeah, I just think they're darling. <laughs> oh, that's so much fun! Yeah, your your chickadee also has this this great kind of curious, you know, flair to it. Um, yeah. That's that these these really feel alive. That's so exciting. Yeah, thank you so much for for having this. I'm I'm really excited to be here, and and thank you so much for letting me share. Well, oh, Holly, thank you so much for, for, for sharing with us. And I'd like to, I'm also seeing in the chat, lots of people welcoming you to the community. And we're really thank delighted you. to have you with us. Thank, thank you so much. Yeah, thank that's, you. That's really exciting. That, that was wonderful. Um, Susan, um, I'm going to allow you to unmute and you can now. Uh, great to see you. Hello, hello. So you said, um, hold on, I thought I lowered my hand and it went up again. You, so you, you said um, landscapes on toned paper on Thursday, right? That is correct. Do you think I have enough? <laughs> <laughs> you know, you can, this baby, I'm going to have a lot of fun. <laughs> that is, that is going, to, there's, that is going to inspire some crafts, I think. I am, I am excited. So I actually, um, I, I, I wanted to show you some, some older drawings that I have done on tone paper. And this is really good to have this reminder because I, I sort of think of, I sort of end up thinking of tone paper as like just sort of a nice neutral background rather than as something that where I can incorporate that color into part of the image. Um, so I would like to, to practice more of, more of doing less. So, yeah. But I did have, did have had a lot of fun with it, and and this this was from last year. Um, uh, it's always hard to get the light to right, but uh, this was uh, oh, fun. Pretty. And it, and it is fun yeah. to these, these lighter colored butterflies to yeah. have them really stand out on the brown papers. That was fun. Um, yeah. But uh, that yeah. is exciting. And that was that was with Prismacolors mostly. I think I used a pen for the the legs. Um, but I, I do like Prismacolors for that because I think they get the really. And, and so, so, so that, that was old. That color was with Prismacolor. Yes. That. Yeah. Boy, it sure um, pops. It sure yeah. pops. Yeah, and then in the previous page. A little yeah. subtle shadow. Oh, check you out. So here, I, here I did a little better with, with actually like using, taking advantage of the toned paper because I had just a little bit of white on the wings. Yeah. Just to show the glossiness of it. But yeah, that was a lot of fun. Whoa! Oh, these guys are these guys are. Fun. And the dark line work is that with pen? Uh, yeah, I, I think that was um, the Faber Castell pit pen. I pretty, I'm pretty sure. I'm not not positive. Oh, that's but yeah. And I got the little the little hairs on the legs with, with the pen as well, just because I couldn't. Get yes, the little backwards facing hair. So when it flies around, it holds its legs in a little basket position. Uh, when it's trying to catch insects out of the air, and those those little hairs help it uh, keep what it catches. Yeah, and I've seen some with uh, longer hairs, and so I kind of want to like sort of see if I can if I can compare which ones had you know back back to these hairs on insects again. Apparently, it's all that's right. Out. That's <laughs> right. <laughs> and by the way, not hairy eyeballs. Um, no hairy eyeballs on this one. Okay, 
but uh, yeah, so I'm, I'm curious, you know, obviously a lot of dragonflies have all different kinds of hunting habits and stuff. And these guys, I've never seen them hunt, but I, and when they land, they seem to like to land on a flat surface, like on the ground, as far as I've seen. So, um, yeah. I don't know. That's okay. really fun. But where I saw also this the, last the, what you did with the shadow there, <laughs> just really subtle, but does so much to pop that thing off the page. That's, that's been fun. So I was actually, this was from a photo that I took last year and then I drew it after, afterwards and it was it landed on the trail. And so the shadow, this is actually just, I just copied the shadow from the yep. photo that I took, which was very nice. But there've been a couple of times where I have um, had just sort of like, I had to figure out where the shadow would be because I didn't have have that. So that, that's been a lot of fun, but yeah, it really does make me good. So I actually saw this guy last year at the same location that I went last weekend so i wanted to thank you for your your advice on the uh, water brush uh it turns out the issue uh, so last week i was asking you why is my water brush not seem to flow enough and you said well take it apart and wash it and i couldn't get it apart and i realized what was happening was is that my medium size water brush i just couldn't get enough of a grip on on it to be able to push the bristles in but I, but the one that I was had had most issue was was the brand new large water brush that I had gotten, which I was able to take apart the same way that you suggested very easily. Yeah. So I did actually take that all apart. I did wash it. It was new, so I don't think that there was any like muck in there. But I don't know. Yeah. But um, that I was I was able to take that apart and wash it, and it actually did seem to work out. It did seem to be better. Although I also think I took my time a little more with the next time I use it. So I'm trying to go out in the cold and, you know, brave the cold. And, and how, how cold is it out there? Not cold enough for me to be whining about it, at least last weekend. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> so 40, 49 degrees, not so bad. Um, oh. So, But this is actually the same pond where I saw that dragonfly last year, but this is last weekend. Oh. So I, but yeah. Well, I, and can I also say mad points for showing the enlargement, um, the, the, the enlargement and then the enlargement of the enlargement. So, <laughs> oh, yeah. uh, and that's so, so you've, you've got, th this is, there's an activity which I call zoom in, zoom out, where you draw <laughs> something kind of and in the distance here, sort of showing where it is. Then you've got it life size along the side of the paper. And then you're zooming in on that. But something that I really like that you're doing is that with that arrow that is furthest on the left, the way that you have angled it, you really feel like the arrow is coming towards you. And that's then zooming. So it really kind of shows you that you're zooming this, that here's the zoom in of this little piece. So that is, I'm going to try to steal that idea. Well, actually, I, it occurs to me, I'm realizing that what, what I, when I could, because I was like sort of not pleased, it didn't seem to look arrowy enough. But now it's occurring to me that one thing that you do sometimes is to put a little three dimensional, you know, sort of thickness to the to the your arrows. And it occurs to me that I didn't do that, and I could. So maybe I'll add that in, and then it will really look. Oh, like I, I really like this one the way it is. I really That's like. True. That. I kind of don't want to mess with. Yeah. Yeah. No. This yeah, is. So I'm this really is... curious. I I feel like I know. I should know what this plant is because I've seen it during the rest of the year, but I don't know. So I'll have to go back in the spring and see if that plant or in the summer and see if that plant's growing and figure out what it actually is. But there were all these little holes on all of these, like, well, most of the seeds here. And I tried to pick it apart and it just kind of crumbled in my fingers. I really need to get like a, a, a magnifying glass or something. Cause I, I don't, it seemed like maybe it might be like an insect hole or something. Um, but I tried to pick them apart to see if there was anything interesting inside and they were just kind of all crumbled, so I don't know. Probably too late in the year for it to get me sort of good dissections. But is, is this yeah. this is at the edge of a snow-covered pond? Yeah. So this is we had we had yeah. this crazy like snow ice horribleness last this, week. Like, um, I, I'm absolutely yeah. loving the shadows in the snow, <laughs> and this th this just feels so winter. Yeah, I was, I was hoping, I was like, oh, I'll go to the pond. There'll be reflections on the ice. It'll be so dramatic. And then, of course, it was covered in snow. But then I realized the sun was going down. And it was, it was sort of dramatic with the nice uh, shadows anyway. So it all worked out. I, weird thing I, had, I noticed is that this is a really big pond. And it doesn't look that big in the picture. I have a really hard time with the scale, I think. Because like you get this 
well, the, the, this beaver lodge here and this island in the middle of the pond. And they, they like the, the back end of the pond is like way, way far back, but it's, for some reason it all looks sort of closer. So I'm gonna have to keep working on that, but, I, but hopefully, you know, with the Thursday, maybe I'll get, get some good tips on like how to get the scale right. But uh, <laughs> that, yeah. that is, yeah, he, he was that, that is, that is really form we had here. So. Fine. I, I, I'm copying down, I'm, I'm making little doodles on my page of your arrow shape. Oh. Um, so <laughs> I don't know, I feel I, like I must have seen that from some of your stuff at some point. I don't know, but um, uh, this is this is cool. And how inspiring that 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 just so interesting the little. <clears throat> The little zone with the cattails, the, um, um, I love there's that little raised area of snow that casts its own shadow. And then the tall things sticking out are wrapping their shadows up over that. And you, you really, I can feel the textures and the contours of the surfaces that you're showing by those, by those shadows. And also people notice how that background is handled. So an incredibly complex subject where there are, there are distant trees and they've lost their leaves. So you're seeing trunk, 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 branches, 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 branches. And, but you didn't get lost in that detail. You've put in an area of tone with the watercolor to suggest the most distant trees. And then we have some sticking out above that over the horizon of those other things. And so we see that, and then we, our brain says, oh, so those things in the back must be distant trees. It is a very successful solution to this complex drawing problem. Thank, thank you. It was actually was really interesting because this is, this is like essentially was what I was actually seeing. Uh, and I'm very glad that I'm actually like forcing myself to go out in the cold and do this because I, I previously haven't done a whole lot of like drawing or painting actually at oh, the Oh, that's really cool. But that you see really it some cool. point, this was the weird thing is, is this is a very dense forest in here. I've walked in there, there's, there's mosquitoes everywhere. Um, but there's, it's very, it's all very dense forest. But looking at it, you had like the front layer of trees was just really genuinely that one like row of trees and the sky was showing behind it. And then you had, and it, then it suddenly became so dense that you couldn't see any sky through it. And on this side, it was pretty much all yep. that dense when there was this one pine tree sticking up above there. So that's <laughs> that's, that's uh, this is this is just such a beautiful solution to that. So clear. I actually, now I realize why this is the case is there's actually a path back here in between mm. the trees that's wide enough that probably that accounts for the reason why there's this like gap in the. Oh uh, yeah yeah yeah. Now I realize that's <laughs> I love it. Yeah. So wonderful solution to that. Thank you. Um, Thank you so much. Um, that was a really exciting share. Um, I just looked at my watch or the clock on my computer here and realized that in five minutes, I'm about to start a training for National Park Service um, volunteers to teach nature journaling in the National Park Services. So I'd better get into that meeting. Um, and But I really do want to... Uh, to to thank you folks for these wonderful shares. And thank you so much for joining me. I also want to send a shout out to my co-conspirator, Vea Moore, for your, your help in uh, wrangling the, 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 the event and the meeting here. Um, thank you so much. And uh, for people who didn't get to share, I really look forward to um, seeing those uh, in a subsequent meeting. So I now have four minutes till start time. And I know they're probably sweating over there. Where's Jack? Is he gonna show up for our training? And so I better get on that meeting. Dear friends, thank you. I love you. Take care of yourselves, take care of each other. Let's take care of this planet together. We can do this. We can get through this and we can do this together. And um, let's all step forward as a loving community to, um, to be the best to bring up, to show what's best in our species. Be well, dear friends. Thank you.